Modularization, Script Blocks and Functions. In this nugget, we're going to focus on the different ways that you can modularize your Windows PowerShell script code to make it more easily reused across different tasks. We'll start with the basis of modularization, script blocks. Then we'll move on to some simple functions. And then we'll talk about how to get information into functions and how to get data out of functions. We'll start with an example the ping host function. This will actually build on some code that we developed in an earlier nugget and it's a running example that we'll use through the next few nuggets as we evolve through progressively better levels of modularization. We'll start with script blocks which are the lowest form of modularization in PowerShell and which are the element that all other forms of modularization really evolve from. So we'll start with just a simple script block that we're going to assign to a variable $SB. This will just write a simple string. If we look inside SB we can see the code and if we use the ampersand which is PowerShell's invocation or execution operator we can invoke the code contained in the variable and actually execute it. Script blocks can be pretty complicated. For example, let's reuse some of the code that we created earlier. Dollar sign computer equals localhost. Dollar sign results equals get wmyobject query select all from win32 ping status where address equals single quote dollar sign computer single quote. If results dot status code equals zero and we will write host pingable else we will write host not pingable so now we've put all that code into a script block it's a little awkward typing all that at the command line but again this is just to reinforce the fact that the command line is not really any different from working in a script now we can execute that script block and we'll see that localhost is pingable. Of course, going back and editing the script block inside the variable gets a little complicated, and that's often why you find yourself in a script file. So let's take this same concept, open up our script editor, and we'll type the same code. We'll start by creating a variable, and doing this in a script editor allows us to be a little bit freer with the formatting. It's not that we couldn't type it exactly this way from the command line, it's just that the command line makes it a little bit difficult to go up and catch typos and fix things. So that's one of the nice parts about working in a script editor. So we'll create our script block. Set computer equal to localhost. Set results equal to get wmyobject. Run the query select all from win32 ping status where address equals dollar sign computer. And again, because this string is outermost delimited in double quotation marks, dollar sign computer will be replaced with the contents of that variable. If results dot status code equals zero, then we will write host pingable. Otherwise, we will write host not pingable. And then finally, the last thing our script will do is execute that script block. Let's run this in an external window, and we can see that it works. So this is kind of a way to make those script blocks a little bit more reusable. You can get into the script more easily, change that value. But ultimately, what we'd really like to do is be able to parameterize this and, and honestly be able to store it somewhere other than a variable. I mean, that's kind of an awkward way to refer to a command. So this is the basis of modularization in PowerShell, but it's certainly not the ultimate goal of modularization in PowerShell. Ideally, what we want to be able to do is to put this into a named function. In fact, let's just recall all that code. And instead of assigning this code block or script block to a variable, we'll give it a name using the function keyword. We'll call it pinghost. I really like to name my functions with a very commandlet style name so that verb dash noun sort of naming convention so there we've we've created a function called ping host let's run it in a shell oh wait it it didn't actually do anything 
Okay, so what's happened here is that we've defined the function inside the script, but we never told PowerShell to execute the function inside the script. So let's go ahead and do that. Ping host. Now if we run it, we can see that we got our result, pingable. Of course, it's still hard-coded in there. So the next thing we need to talk about is how to get data, like a parameter, into the function so that we can customize the way the function runs without having to go in and modify the function every single time we run it. Now the way to do that is to just create a parameter block inside the function. Param, and then in parentheses, a comma separated list of all the different parameters we want this to use. Another good thing we should probably start doing at this point is putting in some comments to sort of document what's going on. So attempt to ping whatever is in dollar sign computer. We'll put a little reminder to ourselves that a status code equal to zero is good news, anything else is bad. So now we've parameterized this function. We've created a parameter called dollar sign computer and given it a default value of localhost. This always needs to be a string. So another thing we can do is tell PowerShell that it needs to be a string by putting the data type in square brackets just before the variable name. If we wanted to provide multiple different input parameters, we could do it that way. Just separate each one with a comma. Now you could string these all together on one line, but with a lot of parameters they start to sort of scroll off the edge of the screen. So after the comma I like to hit enter and sort of stack out each parameter on its own line. Now we're not actually going to keep this second parameter in here for right now. Let's just run our script exactly as is and see what happens. Okay, we got pingable back. That's because, although I didn't specify input for dollar sign computer, I did have a default value ready for it. The way to provide a different value is to simply stack it on after the function name. Here's something that's a little bit dangerous and confusing though, especially if you've come from an older scripting language like VBScript. Let's say we do have a second parameter. how would I provide that parameter value to the function? Now, if you guess by providing a comma and then the value, you would unfortunately be wrong. On the command line like this, PowerShell interprets all comma-separated lists as an array. So both of these values would be passed as an array to dollar sign $computer. The times variable wouldn't get anything. The way to pass a value to those different parameters is to simply create a space delimited list. So now nuggets 1 will be passed as dollar sign computer and 2 will be passed as dollar sign times. That's kind of an important difference from some other scripting languages and it's kind of confusing because you define the parameters in a comma separated list but you call the parameters in a space separated list. So let's take out that second parameter again, run our script and see what we get. Okay, Nuggets 1 was pingable. Let's make sure we test this with something that's not reachable, just to make sure it works correctly both ways. Good, it's taking a second for the ping to time out, and then we get not pingable. Excellent. So that's how you bring input into a function. The function doesn't attempt to refer to variables which were created outside the function. Instead, every piece of data that the function's going to need to work with is passed to it in a parameter block. Now there's an alternate way of specifying this input parameter that you may run across. It's not any better or worse than the way I've just showed you, it's just different. And that way is to just provide the parameters in parentheses directly after the function's name without the param keyword. So it doesn't really look that much different. It's still a comma separated list. And if you're used to other scripting languages like VBScript or JScript, this is the type of syntax they use. So either one of these is okay. This will still run and give us identical results. Not pingable. So the next thing we need to talk about is how to get this data out of the function in a slightly different manner. 
there are actually three ways of getting things out of a function. Now the first way is the way that we've just been using, which is the write host commandlet. We learned earlier that the write host commandlet writes directly to the console window. The second way is the write output commandlet. And we learned earlier that write output allows you to write directly to the pipeline. The third way is the return keyword. The return keyword writes one value, which you specify, to the pipeline and immediately exits the function so that nothing else in the function will execute. So let's look at how each of these works and sort of compare and contrast them. Here we're using the first way, write host. So let's do something here. Let's take the results of ping host and put them in the variable output. So we're setting output equal to the result of the function. And just to keep things interesting, let's give it a name that's actually reachable. When we're finished, we'll write the contents of output to the host in the foreground color of yellow. Just to differentiate things though, up here, let's have this use a foreground color of magenta. And for not pingable, we'll use a foreground color of red. So let's run this now, and we get pingable in magenta. That means when this function ran, this wrote directly to the console window. The function itself did not produce any output, so the output variable doesn't contain anything. So there was nothing displayed in the foreground color of yellow. So whenever you use write output, you're not actually creating a return from your function. Your function isn't actually giving back a value or any information. You're just writing directly to the console window. That makes it very difficult to reuse whatever your function produced because there's no way of capturing that information and reusing it. So let's change things up a bit to use the second way, which is write output. Now write output doesn't support a foreground color parameter, so I removed that, changing write host to write output. Now if we run it, we can see that pingable shows up in yellow. That's because pingable was output to the pipeline. It actually became the return value of the function. So the function's return value was stored in the output variable, and it was then displayed here in the foreground color of yellow. What might be a little more useful is instead of returning pingable, is to return true or false. Now let's run it and we get the value true. Here's why that's useful. Let's sort of take all this away. We're going to leave our function the same. If ping host nuggets1, if that returns true, then get wmyobject win32 operating system from the computer nuggets1. Else we will just display nuggets1 is not reachable. By having our function return true or false, our function can stand in for a comparison. So we're going to try and ping a particular computer, and if it's pingable, we'll go ahead on to our next operation, which is to try and connect to it with WMI. If it's not pingable, we won't waste our time trying to connect to it via WMI. So let's run this again. It was pingable, so we did connect with WMI, and we retrieved the information that we were after. So let's take one last step to parameterize this slightly and put this information into a variable called computer. And instead of hard coding this value throughout the script, we'll just use whatever's in the computer variable. should get the same results when we run it. We did. Right there. If we change this to not reachable, we'll run it in an external window this time. Takes a couple seconds to time out and then it says that not reachable is not reachable. So that's the second way of getting things out of the function. 
The third way is to use the return keyword instead of write output. What's interesting about the return keyword is that it will automatically exit the function. So if we put one last line of code into the function, and run this now, we can see that we did go out and get the WMI information. Let's run it in an external window just to better illustrate that. So not reachable is not reachable. Sorry, we need to change this back to a reachable name. Nuggets1. And we went out and got our information. But you never saw this hey there. Because as soon as the function hit here and returned true or returned false, it exited the function immediately. So line 13 never executed. So those are the three different ways you have of getting output out of a function. Write host will write directly to the console window, but you cannot capture that and reuse the output in some way. Write output does write to the pipeline, and so that becomes the return value of your function, and you can capture and reuse that information as we've done here in this if statement. Return does the same thing, but immediately exits the function. So to contrast this again, we'll put write output back in here. Run this in an external window. You see we did get hey there, and it came first, and then we got our WMI information. That's because we output true to the pipeline, then finished our function on line 13, and then this resumed execution and went and got our WMI. So those are the big differences between write output and return. And this is that sample function that I promised you. In fact, let's just delete this extraneous code to leave the function itself the only thing in here. And let's save this somewhere so we can reuse it in the future. This is a great example of how to work with functions, how to declare functions, how to get data into functions through the input parameters, and how to get data out of functions through write output or the return keywords, or write host if you just need to display something directly at the console window. In this nugget, we looked at the basis of Windows PowerShell modularization. We started with script blocks, which are the basic element that all Windows PowerShell modularization is built from. We took that a step further to create a sort of named script block, which is a, a simple function. We looked at ways of defining function parameters as input, and the different ways that functions can produce output. As an example, we created a ping host function. This built on some script code that we created earlier, and we're going to continue to evolve that function throughout the next couple of nuggets as we create more complex and more easily reused forms of modularization in PowerShell. I hope this has been informative, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.